<laughs> and and uh, I think it's funny that that um, we've gone from Dominic Pace, or it used to be Denny Barrett, to now Brendan Barrett's father, or Brady Barrett's father, and that's you're you're Bennett Pace's father. If that's okay, please. I don't I don't mind being in the shadows, especially with him. I'm so so proud of him in so many ways. Hey man, you uh, so again, this is a uh, swing hard in case you hit it. That's the name of the podcast. It is. Yes. Uh, and you are a perfect candidate to be a guest on here. I know you're busy. You're starting something coming up. But we are an episode. I, I I know people say don't keep bringing up how many. But this is what, 90, 95? 96? 93. Yeah. So I like it's to bring I'm yeah. a baseball guy. It's all about numbers. So I'm on 93 right now. And then strength going, uh, you know, the streak's going strong. Yeah, um, terrific. Yeah, I got a little bit of baseball memorabilia. We're, we're a baseball family. Happy to show you guys there as well. I love that. Talk to me, Mr. Dominic Pace. We're with Dominic Pace, actor, extraordinaire, fundraiser. I'm looking up. It's funny when I see you uh, also a parent of two boys and a parent of a great first baseman. I get the coach, uh, Bennett Pace. Um, but I, I've i been fortunate to meet some beautiful people and meet some really uh, interesting and build some great relationships with this great game of baseball. And I've had a chance to use baseball as, as a tool to uh, to reach out to people. And and, uh, and you, my friend, as busy as you are, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, share with us for a little bit and, and talk about, number one, talk about parenting, uh, which is probably a big priority in your life. Would you, w am I right there? Oh, without question. You know, I, I, I grew up uh, with a single mom and uh, my parents were great. Just two Italian hotheads, a lot of passion, a lot of passion. I mean, I, I think that kind of led to, to my career. Um, but obviously missed out on a few things. My, my grandfather was such an inspiration to me. And the one thing I wanted to do since day one was just always be a present father. And uh, it's paying its dividends now. First and foremost, I can't thank you guys enough uh, for allowing Bennett to be part of such a program, uh, which inspires uh, a just uh, a incredible work ethic. And I'm seeing it, which has sort of inspired me. You know, we get into our 40s a lot of times as fathers. We start losing, you know, it's that that uh, phrase from uh, Bull Dorm where you're, you know, you're lo lollygagging. Yeah. And uh, just to see his motivation as a reminder of when I was his age, um, you know, having that fire as uh, wanting to be a baseball player and also at the same time starting to pursue acting when I was about 17 or 18 years old. Uh, but it's just so great just to see those fundamentals that you guys instill in them week to week. Um, and indirectly, it has inspired me in so many ways with my acting. Uh, the things have kicked up. Uh, today's a very special day. Uh, for the first time in five years, I will film day one of a lead role for Lifetime Television, and that will be uh, film, uh, airing this summer. Uh, it's called Secrets of the Celebrity Nanny. I play the bodyguard to the lead, and uh, I, I'm just very excited. But it really it comes back to the boys, and specifically Bennett right now, just in terms of his passion, his pride, where he feeds off that energy from you, Coach. Uh, he feeds off of it from his teammates. Uh, coming on Saturdays and Sundays, uh, just my energy starts picking up just to watch the passion of these boys and also how they're coached. Um, so I, I really want to just say thank you, uh, first and foremost, uh, just in regards to uh, having him uh, be part of this program. Originally, he was part of a rec league in Hollywood, and I started seeing his work ethic day in and day out. I knew that he wanted something more, uh, but we didn't know, obviously, how competitive the Valley was going to be. Uh, yeah. But it just means so much to me, and we're so proud of him to be able to keep up, uh, that he's able to keep up in regards to the talent uh, that you guys yield uh, year to year with your programs. Well, let me say this, man. And, and thank you for the compliments there. He has, a, um, you know, kids today, when you do this for as long as I have, and God, I wish I was in my 40s, you know, Rob. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rob just turned 60 yesterday. I, I got to tell you, man. It, and he looks every bit of 60 now. I mean, you could see it. Once you hit 60, you, you, you're you 60, Robbie, okay? Great years don't go away. <laughs> <laughs> but the confidence that you have instilled, you as a, um, you and your wife, obviously, and 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 I'm going to tell you, I have, I've met her maybe once or twice. I'm going to give her a lot of this credit, if you don't mind. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, to have a partner in crime or uh, a partner of raising two young boys. I got two young boys myself and a daughter. But yeah. the confidence that Bennett comes out, you know, we, we teach kids, we look at kids, but we first build relationships with kids, even as a parent. Yes. Um, and what, what I see with you, it, and it stems back from from your upbringing, and I want to touch touch on that a little bit. Talk to me about your growing up. Where'd you grow up? In, in, uh, and sure. where, where the hell, how'd you get today, though? But where'd you grow up at? Where are you from? Uh, I grew up in Austin, New York, about 40 minutes north of New York City, uh, famous for their prison, Sing Sing Prison. Uh, beautiful, diverse town. But more importantly, Coach, uh, the one thing that uh, it reminds me uh, of, the, uh, of that town 
uh, are you guys in terms of the coaches, the teachers, the parents that were so supportive, but also at the same time, they hit us with tough love. And I think there's a lack of that sometimes these days. You know, you have some of these articles. Well, I'm it's sort of subjective in terms of, oh, the coach was too hard. The one thing that I loved about these coaches, I was a third string football player. I was a starting pitcher for my varsity team, even in 10th grade, uh, was just that they, there was tough love. And you have to give the kids that because they're going to learn the hard way later on in life. Um, it was a beautiful town, Austin, New York. Uh, we were state champions with football. Uh, we were decent with varsity, but I'll never forget my varsity uh, football coach and, and also baseball coach just in regards to instilling those principles of hard work and being unapologetic. You know, sometimes you have to give it to kid, kids the, the, the real way. Uh, because, again, it preps you for life and it prepped me for being consistent in my career for 25 years where I was never a celebrity, but also each and every job had to come with hard work, perseverance, a tremendous amount of rejection, and also at the same time, um, of staying focused on the craft itself. Yeah, uh, when I was 16 years old, I, I started my high school musical, uh, Grease. Uh, I went to Marist College for one year. I started getting tendonitis, tennis elbow, and I knew the dream wasn't going to happen, but I loved baseball so much. Uh, so this beautiful thing happened and, uh, in, in regards to coming out here. There was a coach, and I'm sure you might have been friends with. His name was Augie Garrido, and he coached. Oh, the best. The best, <laughs> man. The he, best. he coached Kevin Costner at Cal State Fullerton. I was just starting to study at the Actors Studio uh, and also the Bill William Esper Studio in New York. And anyhow, they had a tryout. Um, the Detroit Tigers and the Yankees approved for love of the game uh, could go through uh, and they can use the team so long as they use at least the major league and the minor league players. But they had about five fill-ins for both the Yankees and the Tigers. And Augie Garrido was hired by Kevin Costner. Uh, Costner uh, was under him uh, at Cal State Fullerton before he went over to Texas. Nice. Uh, so I owe a lot to Augie Garrido in regards to getting out here because my first – it wasn't a big break, but I was a special ability ball player at one of the relief pitchers uh, throughout the, the game. Wow. And they had us for five days out here in California, and that's what uh, got my wife and I uh, to come out here and to chase the dream. Uh, ever since 2002, I've been uh, almost on 100 shows. I'm nearing 100 television shows. Uh, you talk about charity. I had a very small opportunity uh, with a show, a Star Wars show called The Mandalorian, where I was Ooh. the smallest of smallest yeah. characters. I was not a star in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but I hope this will be an inspiration for Bennett and my older son, Dante, for many years to come. I had the smallest opportunity, but I kept promoting it in such a way throughout the pandemic that the fan base took to it. And Disney and Lucasfilm were kind enough to put me on a product uh, after all the hustling. But the one thing I wanted to do during the pandemic was to try to give back to a lot of small businesses, uh, create an opportunity. These kids, God bless every student, uh, not only in, at Notre Dame, but also throughout the country. They were going through a hard time where there was, they were sequestered. Uh, yeah. But I, we took the risk. I took Bennett on a national tour over 35 states throughout the pandemic to help out small businesses. We gave 15% back to the stores. And also at the same time, I promoted my career. So it was a great lesson for Bennett to not only give back, but at the same time, build yourself up through believing in not only yourself, through a small opportunity, but also at the same time, your uh, your community. So I've very, been very proud of that. It's been a great career. Never hit the big stardom, but at the same time, uh, due to Bennett's inspiration now, things are really kicking off. We've got three shows uh, coming out, one with Disney+. Plus. It's an inspirational sports film called Chang and Dunk. That airs March 10th. Yeah. Uh, I'll be on um, uh, uh, The Company You Keep. It stars Milo Ventimiglia. That's going to be on ABC uh, this Sunday. And then I guest star opposite the legendary Gary Cole. That'll be March 13th on uh, C uh I believe CBS there. So a lot of good things. Uh, it's been a great career. And and like I said, you, you know, you, you brought up the perfect point of just sort of taking a back seat now and let it Bennett and uh, my older son, Dante, be the star there. You are extremely humble, man. I'm telling you right now. Now, I appreciate you saying because I sit here when I looked up your your uh, on Instagram and and IMDB and, and that's new to me. I'm not although I did play uh, I was on a second team. I played back a, a show called the McCarthy's to Jack McGee and I had to. I was standing to Jack and I, I never, I used to hate when they'd say, okay, second team. Ah, and yes. then I'd be called in and sit there and stand there. And Jack and I were very good friends. He'll be on this eventually. Um, but <laughs> you are sitting back as a second team or you have, you, you taking the role of, um, of, of, of getting what you got. And I'm, and we're going to edit out my vocabulary here, but <laughs> watching what you're telling me and what Bennett can learn and the rest of these guys can learn is, um, First of all, that Mandalorian, that's a big show, man. That's yeah. that's not a – and you played a bounty hunter. Gecko, the bounty hunter? 
Yes, that's correct. But again, a second team, but it, that in, in that particular credit was specifically, I, I think, an example just in regards to having a, a little opportunity and creating something bigger with it. But yes, it was a, obviously a very, very big show. But you were, I guess my point in, in this is, uh, you know, we, we've, we've had people on here and I've, we all were looking for those. When you came out in 2006, you got the opportunity, but um, yeah. you've taken the role at time right now, just right now. It doesn't mean got the big one coming up obviously starting today where are you where are you guys filming what name that again uh, go again right down the uh right on dilling street actually it'll be a sentimental because we grew up with the brady bunch uh, about a few houses away from the brady bunch oh that's the best house i grew up in this town and i would drive by that place still thinking the brady's are there and i wanted to go knock on that door and say look for book look for all of them Marcia. yeah yes yeah. it's a great era of television all throughout all across the board but you, but what I'm what I'm hearing you though, no, you're you're saying this is you come in and you support. You're you take on a supporting role. Am I saying that correctly? At times, a supporting role to to those until now, you're the you're the main dude on this on this next lifetime coming up. You're the main guy, but it's taken you some time, has you, to get oh, to where you're at today. Without question. I mean, you, you, every odd job, you name it, coach. I mean, really everything from waiting tables, uh, driving Uber, uh, moving companies, et cetera. Um, you know, as an independent contractor, what you call my roles more or less are called day players, um, guest stars. I'll have special ability, extra work, uh, and also at the same time, the occasional starring role. Uh, but it's one of those things to where we've had to constantly stay humble because of that reason of, hey, one day you're second team, the next day you're a star. The same thing with baseball players. One day you're a utility player, and then you move your way up to starting first baseman. Uh, so it is sort of the same thing that Bennett's been watching day in and day out in terms of staying humble, not knowing every week in terms of where your status is going to be, but at the same time, by believing in yourself, by working hard. And the other thing I want to talk about, you, you, you know, you touched on social media and you touched on it uh, indirectly about four months ago. And I, I might be paraphrasing you, but I think you were talking something in regards to the, to the boys as far as with showboating or you know, yeah. kind of getting that validation on social media, but really ultimately wanting to focus on putting in the work. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things with social media, one of the things I wanted to do now and also to inspire Bennett and Bennett has sort of inspired me by coming home every day, not recording the fact that he's at the gym, not recording the fact that he hit a home run or what have you. I, I'm more of a, a proud dad doing that for him, but yeah. really putting in the work. I just finished Daniel Day Lewis's biography. And the, the, the brilliant thing about this man, who is arguably the greatest actor of all time, is that all he did was focus on the work and not focus on all the showboating. Right now, social media, I feel like it's such in such a weird place where you have uh, some of these models that are getting all the credit in the world where in a perfect world, I think there should be a million followers for the parents, teachers and coaches or the single mom who's working hard. So it's become so uh, irregular. And the one thing I found myself getting caught up in last year was just all of the sort of the glory and the attention and the 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 um, the accolades from Star Wars, but forgetting about the basics. And I think, you know, I'm sure if you go back to maybe John Carlo's work ethic or you go back to some of these pros, uh, you know, maybe uh, uh, Hunter Green right. in regards to the fact that they weren't focused on how many followers they have. They weren't focused on how many likes they have, but specifically focusing on the work. So. Um, the one thing I wanted to tell Bennett and the one thing he inspired me with this year was just a, in regards to just putting in the work. And now we see this uptick in sort of our, my bookings, uh, specifically, I think, because of that attitude. And and uh, I, I'm starting to see, you know, his his effect on the field from, again, just sort of focusing more on the work as opposed to the attention there. Hey, man, well said. Well, said. I cannot repeat, you know, you, you could if you what you just said, take that, put that in a jar and hold on to that stuff because just do the actions. The results will come. And yeah. the results do come at the action. And it's like with experience, the experience I've had with watching players, you know, we go two nights a week with Bennett and the other guys. And, but you could tell the guys that put in the extra work and it's yes. really not extra work. They use that term extra work. It's not extra work. Do the work. You, yeah. you can't go twice a week. You can't, you can't uh, memorize lines. And I know I'm under, I'm understating this, but you can't, you can't prepare for a role two nights a week uh, when they call for you, a uh, 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 at the studio, you got to do the work in between. It's that, it's that, it's that dash in between of when you were born and when you passed that little dash on that gravestone. I got, it just got dark, didn't I? But it's that little dash that no one talks about. That's where the work is being done. Yeah. We celebrate the birth. God, I don't know where I'm going with this. We celebrate yes. the, we celebrate. Preach, the, Danny, preach. Yeah. We celebrate the yeah. death, but it's that freaking little dash in there where all the work is done. Yes. That makes yeah. sense. 
Absolutely. One of the other things I want to touch about, uh, upon in regards to you talk about preparation is a tremendous parallel. I don't know if any of the young adults are listening or even uh, the, the grownups, and I don't know how many actors you've had on the show, um, but there are some similarities. Bennett and I will share our day to day from his at bats on the weekends to also my preparation in that it's the same formula, believe it or not, in regards to getting out of your head. So the exciting thing right now with these 14 year olds, which again, blows me away. It almost frustrates me sometimes, Dan, because back in the eighties and, and the nineties, we used to, again, at practice, just hit the ball, pitch right. the ball. And that was it. We didn't do the extra work uh, that it took obviously to get to that next level. Uh, but the one thing is in, it, with the first acting exercise I had was something called repetition. And mm. the one beautiful thing now, which again, I cannot believe he's already seeing 80 miles an hour at yeah. four, with these 14 year olds, oh, but yeah. it's just, it, it, it's the, the state of the times. Um, but the beautiful thing about this 80 mile hour a fastball is similar to acting to where we used to do these repetition exercises where you get out of your head. Mm. So the one thing that I talked to him about in regards to this repetition exercise that I had as an actor was not chewing the scenery. And it's the same thing when you're up there at bat in regards to just having that mental focus, but at the same time, keeping the hands relaxed. And at the same time, getting out of your head, even with that throw from first base to third base, which again, for most of them, God bless, you know, in our era with Chuck Knobloch and Mackie Sasser, it used to break my heart when you see any, any player with the yips. You no know? way you just hang on. No way this went Knobloch and Sasser on this. That's the first time. And I love those two names. Great <laughs> yeah, names. Right there. That's right. But but it's but it's a perfect example in regards to things that we do, even as an actor. Sometimes if I, you know, if you're in a slump or why am I not booking, you know, uh, as frequently as I, I should, yeah. it sometimes is because you start getting in your head. Um, so it's been so beautiful to sort of share our experiences, even with my uh, <laughs> I, I've been going down a Weddington golf uh, course there every now sure. and then just to, I still uh, keep working on my swing. But it's just great to share these sort of parallels and give a little bit more of a wider perspective for the ball player. That's why, I mean, I think you guys encourage multi-sports, but oh, also yeah. different experiences in life, which make you a better athlete because you're realizing that the approach for success uh, sort of comes from all different angles. And, and, and But at the same time, the same ideology in regards to staying out of your head, staying relaxed, but also focused at the same time. Hey, man, you know, uh, God, Dominic Pace. Uh, again, name the show you're starting today. What's it? What's it called again? Uh, Secrets of a Celebrity Nanny. Uh, it'll be a great little uh, suspense thriller. I just finished a beautiful Hitchcock uh, uh, book, and there was a great film that I loved when I was a, uh, when I was a kid. It was called Rebecca. It was with uh, uh, Laurence Olivier. But anyhow, there's this sort of overprotective nanny uh, sort of maid, and uh, she was absolutely amazing. I think her name was Judith Anderson. She was nominated for Best Supporting Actress. Uh, but the role is sort of similar to that, and I'm, I'm really excited to, to bring that through. It gets to show different levels uh, of my performance and my character. I love that, uh, Dominic. And, and uh, what I what you were talking about earlier, though, is about the uh, it is defining success in baseball analogous to acting. I know Bennett's gone out there and has gone hit four balls on the on the screws, so line ball to shortstop, line ball to center fielder, line, mm -hmm. and went zero for four. That's a yeah. successful day at the plate. Yes. Similar than similar to your auditions, you may come out of an audition, I assume, and absolutely nail it. Absolutely. Yes. Yet that phone call doesn't pay, but the job's not yours. Have you had to fight through some sort of rejections coming through this uh, this great career of yours? Oh, without question. Uh, you know, I want to give you a great example of that in regards to that rejection. I was called back. It was a, a show called Blue Bloods, and it was uh, it stars uh, yeah. Tom Selleck. And I was yeah. in New York. We gave uh, New York. My agent was on both coasts and my mother's there. My sister. We gave New York a shot in 2011 when the boys were younger. And I booked a few shows out there. But there was one audition uh, was for a lead guest star. And I didn't get the part, but I remember leaving the room so satisfied, just like, again, that liner to second base, that liner to shortstop, to where you commit. Oh, stop. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Exactly where my catcher wanted it. Um, it's the same thing with an audition where you feel completely in the zone. And, and that was a, a great story just in regards to not having what, you know, the result that I wanted, but at the same time feeling so confident because I was completely out of my head. A yeah. tremendous amount of rejection, uh, you know, but that's the importance with coaches, parents, teachers, teaching you that tough love, because I would have had my feelings hurt years ago. You know, yeah. years ago, they used to be a lot more politically incorrect. You're too this, you're too that, you're too, you know, whatever. Um, but at the same time, by getting out of your head, believing in yourself and having that commitment that you exist, that you uh, your work is strong, it makes you more confident as a performer. It makes you more confident as an athlete. And again, I, I, it's really just sort of a beautiful trajectory right now in regards to both stories sort of intermingling and hopefully uh, 
we'll have a nice Division One story for uh, for Bennett there shortly enough. There. No, you know, even he's been blessed with some God given talent like yourself. He has. He's a tall, lanky first baseman. They, you know, I think uh, I think between Bennett and I in the last two years together, we have, may have said maybe ten words together. What I love about him, he just works, doesn't yeah. speak much. And we'll ask when he has a question. And I think that comes from you and your upbringing and, 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 and your wife. I mean, all we want these young kids today as, as coaches and as instructors, what I want to do is I want to be able to assist Bennett and any player to be able to fulfill their dream. If, yep. if it's there, you know, there's fantasies out there and I don't want to ruin anybody's fantasy, but we know how hard it is in your business to yep. be, to be in the top 5%, to be working. Let's just say that to be right. working. Um, same with baseball. We want these kids to continue to play and play as long as, as long as they can. And yeah. Bennett's one of those guys, you start developing a relationship with these young kids. I do. I've been doing it for a long time. And Bennett's a kid you just root for. You just, yeah. you, he gets to the plate and the human, the human aspect of me as I'm coaching third base or going, come on dog, not to win the damn thing. Cause I want him to feel the success yeah. that I felt getting up there. That makes sense. Without question. And, you know, we had a great example of that sort of failure and success this past uh, two weekends ago um, where, you know, we lost the tournament, but we're coming off of three tournament wins. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to adjust to because I was seeing that he was fouling off a little bit was I went to uh, Big Five and I got little foam golf balls yeah. and I got a, a, a stick bat, but one of those aluminum stick bats. Yeah. And uh, he only struck out once. I think his average on the uh, the uh, for the for the. Uh, for the uh, for the tournament was maybe about 400 or so oh but that's he all had, oh uh, that's all dominic go ahead that's all yeah don't <laughs> no 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 but, but but still i mean you know again we're, we're you know he's shooting for, for for the stars in many ways right uh, but just the fact that he was putting it in play he only struck out one time it actually got on base on that one it was a curveball in the dirty just an eight um but just cha also in regards to as far as with the acting changing up you know how can i maybe work something around let's go to baseball central you got they don't get much work in regards right. to the hard curveball let's go to baseball central and let's adjust the uh, uh the pitching machine to where now you know i don't want you just like you talked about preparation i don't want the only time that he's going to see a hard 65 mile 75 mile per hour curveball uh at, at the time that he has that opportunity in a tournament in vegas or at the plate so let's go ahead and adjust that but we've adjusted to the stick bat and yeah. also these foam golf balls which now i, I i've been uh I got to work on my hook here. I got, I, for some reason, I keep looking, Dan. I don't know how good yeah. you go, but uh, it's now sort of uh, helped us both in regards to our, our swing. And uh, it, I was just noticing just a lot more foul offs. And uh, I, I noticed that improvement there this, uh, this past tournament. Well, I, I got to tell you nothing against your golf game, but it's, a, it's a little more <laughs> challenging to hit a golf ball moving uh, a yes. baseball moving and then a yeah. golf ball sitting there. And I, again, my golf game, I'll I tell you what I, uh, I say to you, I don't know why you're hooking. Would I just line your feet up the other way and, and aim yeah. a different direction instead of trying to change it? Okay. Well, it's, it's funny you say that because he goes up to that great guy, Rennell up in uh, Santa Clarita. And uh, it actually does have the connection because he was pulling off a lot. As a matter of fact, I think he had a liner to your head one of the, uh, about a few months ago. He did. Uh, you he know, did. and you were right at the first, first base coach uh, position. Yes. But now he's been pulling less and he's been going to left center um, because now Rennell has just sort of taught him to close that hip. So now, we, you know, especially on that first pitch, you know, and then also with these umpires, I mean, it's so frustrating. I will never argue them as passionate as I am as every game. I will never argue them. But it drives you crazy when literally it's on the outside part of the plate. You, everybody knows it. And that's going to be your strike three. So yeah. it, when the coach is not doesn't have the take sign on. I want him to take full advantage of that fastball right down the pipe. He's still at 14 to where these kids are still throwing their number one on the first pitch. Uh, but to really take advantage of that, just I, I compare it to a bully of where you want to get that punch in right away. Yeah. Um, yeah. But to make that punch count, because a lot of times it's so frustrating to see him rip that foul ball and, 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 and send it almost 250, 300 feet. Um, but I, we want him obviously to straighten it out. So that's been a great adjustment that Rennell's uh, taught him. And uh, he's been adjusting with that in regards to the fouls there as well. Big fan of Raynell. Him and I work, we've gone, we've traveled to Arizona, to Vegas, we into Georgia. Raynell and I have in, in uh, uh, coaching teams, and we see the same thing. There's so many with hitting, you know, like different from a golf ball. The golf ball's sitting right there. And now if you have a, a downward lie or an upward mm -hmm. lie, it changes things. Or if you're into sand, like I always seem to be, I hit every sand trap that's out there. But the rough... Hey, at least, at least you're somewhere within the way. My, mine's the trees. Mine's the trees. <laughs> <laughs> but with, you know, you got home plate that's 17 and a half inches, 17 inches, 17 and a half with the black. And the umpire's back there. And some days I ask the players, 
you know, wh- uh, how big is home plate? And they'll always tell me the right answer. They'll tell me the answer if they know it. The truth is, it's what the knucklehead behind calling balls and strikes is. Is that <laughs> yes. thing three inches or is it going to be 28 inches on that certain at bat? Exactly. And, and that's the thing, you know, obviously I think the coaches do just an amazing job, Kenny and everybody over there. Um, but a lot of times they do, you know, work the strategy as a team and they do want that, that take on, on the first pitch. Right. Uh, but I just love when they have it off for them, because again, that's what we try to work on because, you know, these umpires, unfortunately, you just don't know what you're going to get. Hey, listen, it's a hot day. I'm getting paid 40, 50 bucks. I'm going to call strike three as well. Absolutely. You know, my, my uh, varsity coach used to say, you know, what is the pot on the stove? Is the pot on the stove? Huh? Exactly. But, uh, we can, you know, we don't want to rely on that. I wanted what to, is- Denny, real quick, just wanted to share with the audience. Um, oh. We have a bucket list. I don't know if you see, there's a home plate with 30 baseballs um, uh, in the back. We have three positions open. But anyhow, just a fan of baseball in general, we've been doing a uh, cross-country tour of hitting every major league ballpark. And uh, last year on Star Wars night in Tampa, I was fortunate enough to uh, sing the national anthem for the Tampa Rays, Toronto Blue Jays, as well as the Canadian national anthem. But we have three stadiums left. We've got uh, Detroit. Uh, we've got uh, Toronto, which I want to stay at that hotel in, in the park. Yeah. And then also Miami. And then that's it. But it's a great thing. They used to have that great little um, magazine catalog called Sky Mall. Uh, okay. on, on the airplane and yeah. uh, they, my sister got a custom made for us travels of the pace family uh, you put your little pins into where you've been they even got the minor league stadiums uh, but just the baseball family in general there I, I thought maybe some of the uh, other fathers or moms uh, would appreciate that just in regards to a little bucket list uh, collector uh, frame that we have hey, if there. you get a chance after your busy busy uh, you know busy schedule bring that thing yeah. out sometime if you come to a practice I'd love to see it I'd love to see it uh, up, up close man I'd like to absolutely. see absolutely yeah, it even came with little flags like what's your favorite stadium? Which one did you just uh, finish? Which one's your, uh, you know, which one are you heading to? But my favorite, I don't know what yours is, uh, Coach, but uh, uh, Wrigley Field was just a dream come true. Before they built in, I was fortunate enough in 2006, before they built in all the digital, to just hear the sound of the game. Yep. They had a four-piece uh, older gentleman band. Uh, and then also just the smells of the Vienna beef hot dog, the beer, the uh, the deep dish pizza. Oh, my God. I, I mean, we're getting too old now. We can't have that anymore. But, uh, oh, man, they, they got the, be- the, the best food out of all the uh, the 30 stadiums over there. God, I love that story. I love that story of you taking your son and going to those stadiums, man. Because those are memories that, you know, that's that's all my dad used to tell me. Uh, hey, all we're doing is is, uh, is making memories. All we're doing is making memories. And uh, yeah. you cannot put a price tag on a memory of taking your son or daughter uh, to a ball game and yeah. getting their point of view. I went to a game one time with a uh, with a, 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 a this was a date years ago. Yeah. And, and I'd rather go to a game by myself. I don't want to go with a guy that has it, that knows everything. You know, I've been to those. He just, ta, 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 you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just want to watch the game. Let me just watch the game. And uh, that's why, you know, people upset the game's taking too long. I'll tell you what, the game can go four hours. It's therapeutic for me. Get me to the yard. I get there hour early anyhow. And, and, um, and, and just enjoy it is it's therapy for me. But I remember her looking going, Oh my gosh, there's, um, there's 11. There's, there's 15 players on the field at one time. And I went 15 and she was talking about the nine, and then the two base coaches and then the four umpires. Yeah. And she had a whole different perspective of watching a ball game. And I sat there and went, okay, this will be our last date first. But yeah. second of all was, wow, I never, I never, I said, what about the hitter? And he hadn't come to the plate yet. He's not, she says, he's not there yet. Oh, okay. Then when he gets in the batter's box, now we have 16. So it, it's, it's beautiful to just get different perspectives at different games, you know? Absolutely. You know, we're a middle-class family. We don't have much, but uh, there was a ticket broker and I was so fortunate because one time I wanted him to hear those dugout club seats. My wife had them. She works at Paramount Pictures and she was given these little perks uh, when she was in a different department. And I just wanted Bennett to experience it. And thank God, you know, one of the tricks you can do is call these uh, these uh, these brokers and say look, at the last minute, say, hey, look, you know, if you're not selling this ticket, if you have it for half price, because I mean, the prices in Dugout Club are insane. Uh, but I was just so grateful to be able to take Bennett to that experience where you can literally hear that fastball yes. at, at, when it's coming in at 90 miles an hour. What if, Dominic, you went in there with your with your gecko costume? Did that get you in at all? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Well, they throw you out. I'm just curious. Well, I- I'll tell you, it got me the national anthem in Tampa there. And, and again, it had its perks. I was so grateful to Disney for that opportunity. And most importantly, to try to help those small businesses. You know, I was part of a small business uh, in Sherman Oaks there for about three years. Uh, the greatest owner who actually worked with Notre Dame often at my survival job used to be assistant manager at Maria's Italian Kitchen. And I that was it. with Madeline Alfano, just the sweetest woman who would uh, actually uh, work in conjunction with Notre Dame with a lot of discounts and also charities for the program as well. 
Um, but it was just so great to be part of that community. See a lot of celebrities there. Uh, yeah. We had Brian Cranston in. We had, uh, oh, God, Biff from uh, Back to the Future. Oh, uh, but just yeah. that that whole area is just uh, oh, chock full and, and, and just such a great community. We're hoping to hear some great news there Friday. But either way, uh, Bennett is somebody who will, you know, stand on his feet one way or another, and we'll try to figure it out there. So, Hey, the, some of the uh... – I was thinking, how long did it take to, to, to dress you for that gecko outfit? If I can ask that. I, I, I swear, I looked at it, and it fits me, and my ego's so big. I'll say, I'll wear the outfit, but I want my face to be seen. I want my right. face. So, but did it, what was the preparation for a day of work on on uh, The Mandalorian for you? Absolutely. So the great thing was, was that was Brian Sype who did that makeup. Brian created Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy, and that was a two-hour process. So the funny thing is, Denny, I don't know if you have any claustrophobic uh, tendencies just in regards to elevators. I, you learn something more about yourself. As trunks of cars, trunks of cars. That's <laughs> it. That's it. <laughs> Stay away from the mob. OK, OK. That's it. So, so I had that situation. I worked with this. I, st I was the second team for Frankenstein on Van Helsing uh, with Hugh Jackman back in 2002. And this mask for Frankenstein was not a Halloween mask. It literally hugged my whole face. Wow. At the time, I panicked because they wanted me to breathe through a straw. Oh. But when I ended up doing Bright with Will Smith, I was one of the orcs. There was something very cozy and very comforting, almost like, what do they call that? You know, people with anxiety, would they have the, uh, the heavy blankets. There was something very cozy about the whole thing, <laughs> as opposed to having a freak out. Right. Yeah, to give you another uh, story, uh, Jim Carrey was getting paid two hundred fifty thousand dollars a day. He was still freaking out with that Grinch costume Ugh. because it took six to seven hours. This took two hours, but the one thing, Denny, I have behind me also uh, to my right is uh, uh, my Star Wars collection, and the, and the only reason I bring that up is because the rarest of figures ended up becoming the most expensive. Many kids are listening. The Pokemon figures that are the most rare are the most expensive. So when they were doing the makeup, and even though you said you wanted to have your face seen, the one thing that Star Wars fans love is the extra layers to a character. Why do they have a breathing mask? So I actually had the option on day one because they lost my breathing mask to actually just go uh, with my full face where people can see me. Hey, there I am. Yeah. I didn't want it because for me, as far as with the marketing of a obscure character who was seen for literally 10 seconds in episode one and three, was to have more layers for the hopes of getting that uh, that action figure. I don't know if you're friends with anyone in sci-fi shows, but those Comic-Cons, Denny, it's like the gift that keeps on giving the rest of your life. So one wow. of the things that I was gunning for was to try to get on as many licensed pieces as I could. They were kind enough to put me on a tiki mug. I'll have to get you one. Yes. And also, uh, at the same time, they featured me in the comic where, uh, you know, every kid's dream is to be in a Marvel comic uh, to where they really featured my character in issue three of The Mandalorian. So it was just an amazing experience. We hope that it'll be more. It's one of those examples in terms of, say, even with a coach where you see a player who's going above and beyond. You have certain coaches to where they say, oh, wow, I really like this guy. He's really taking charge. And then there's other coaches or employers who say, whoa, 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 you, you got to slow down. You're only, you know, you're only part of this team. So the great news is, is that they allowed me to do what I did, but also at the same time, it's one of those slippery slopes, especially with Lucasfilm and Disney, where you have to be careful in regards to taking too much charge. Uh, but it was such a beautiful example, again, to, to Bennett, to Dante, in regards to even when you have a small opportunity in this country, you create something, at the same time, help others, and uh, beautiful things come about it. And now we're back to the career. Uh, and again, a lot of good, fun character roles. Got a lot of good films on Amazon. Uh, if you get a chance, one is called The Midnight Man. Uh, one is a darker one called Anonymous Killers. So I've been around, yeah. um, but also at the same time, just really looking forward to the future. And again, Benna with his work ethic is putting about another five years on me, uh, just yeah. in regards to, it's so hard to sit on the couch when he goes right after school, you know, he's had a full day of school. He's heading down to the gym to go do an hour of cardio. So. God. Do they know that Bennett's dad is is Gecko and the Mandalorian? He doesn't, you know. It's funny about that. The um, the humility Be uh, Beckett, excuse me, the humility of Bennett Bennett comes with. And again, man, I don't think you can teach that. I think it comes from you. It comes from your wife. It comes from your father. It comes from it's 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 in the DNA of the humility. I try to tell kids, man. I love what you said about giving it away. You know, my whole goal, what has what has what has made me earn a living. I'm doing something I get to do. Since I've been doing since I was three years old playing, I got still. I was a mascot for my dad's teams back in Toluca Little League way back, way back when. Little, and I had a uniform on, I had the hat on, and I'm sitting there, and, and uh, the pants look bad on me. But man, they would, they, my parents would allow me to to dress up like like my older brothers and be part of be part of something until it was 
my turn to be it. And there's not a better, I, I, I can't stress it enough to um, the opportunity that you and your wife are given Bennett, but yeah. what you have to do, you have to, you have to dress in a mask and go out and be, and, and, and be part of something to provide Bennett the opportunity to experience his, his life is uh, a, yeah. did, did you know that going in there that, uh, that was acting always a part of your career growing as a little boy was acting always there in sports or what, what did you make that decision? Lost him. You're frozen. Hang on a second. Yeah. You got us there, Dominic. Yeah. You can hear us. Okay. You okay. froze for a little bit. You want to oh. let's let's restate that question. I was just going to ask you, Dom. Going in there uh, as a as a young boy was was a uh, was acting and in sports or were or was acting always there. I love entertainment business. I grew up in L.A. I grew up in uh, in in Toluca Lake, North Hollywood, and all my friends are. It went on to the business and I of course played baseball. If I was, if I was smarter, if my parents, I should sue my parents because I should have gotten the stocks and entertainment. I got into baseball. And of course I'm doing a podcast now at 58 years old. Well, there was nothing more beautiful to me than being 10 years old and watching those 86 Mets, uh, strawberry good and uh, wow. Hernandez couple, uh, Gary Carter. It was just such a beautiful way to be introduced to this beautiful game. And again, to be, you know, uh, it sort of had Bennett's talent to a certain extent. Uh, but again, he sort of superseded me at this point. Uh, the adrenaline rush of striking someone out, I got my fastball up to about 78 miles an hour at about 15, 16 years old. Decent speed, nothing crazy like these, these you know, these hot guys these days in terms of their, uh, you know, the phenoms. Um, but I started feeling, again, the tendonitis, and it just happened to be perfect timing in regards to starring in my high school play, having 800 people there and sliding across the, the stage saying a wop, bop, a loop, bop, you know, and, yeah. and screaming it out and having this adrenaline rush that was very similar and feeling alive as I did as an athlete. And I knew that the athleticism, I had Lemoyne take a look at me, Fordham took a look at me. Um, but again, I just knew it wasn't gonna happen. It, it just, I already started feeling the pain. An amazing, honest coach who, you know, I'm sure you guys are the same way, as well as the establishment over at Notre Dame to where they have to tell the division one, whether this kid is the real right. deal or not. Right. Um, but just to feel that adrenaline rush, it sort of transcended over to acting. And the beautiful thing is now, you know, look, we talk about mental health. Um, I'm thankfully I've been a very stable guy throughout my career, but at the same time, I think even for parents and corporate and even going through the pandemic, people could certainly use a class to where you can scream and you can shout and you can yell and you can have all this passion, but have it not amount to anything out in the real world. And it is so refreshing, Denny, to have that feeling in regards to feeling alive. If you want, you know, getting angry at somebody or you're just coming to tears, he, you know, this film is sort of crescendos in certain ways as far as coming to tears that I became so addicted in regards to that, to where, again, the corporate world, you can't do that. You know, your restaurant manager, I mean, you're fired after two days, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so it was just that beautiful adrenaline rush that was similar to somebody striking someone out, or yeah, that's why I get so passionate at the Notre Dame games in regards to uh, shouting and screaming, because the kids sort of feel that adrenaline rush that is very similar to the acting world, which is so addictive, whether you're an athlete or you're a performer, uh, uh, to just hug on to, because again, uh, we have such an advantage because a lot of the corporate world you can't you can't emote in one way or another. That's right, man. I sure love seeing when you and uh, when 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 you and your son showed up to the games, man. I want these kids to know. I see it. You know, we got a small little event. It's a beautiful stadium. You know that beautiful. Yeah. Uh, we can get big crowds there and things, and it's a it's a top notch baseball program. Yeah. But I'm also human, and I see who's coming in, who's coming out. You know, my eyes always out there, and to see a a father and his son and see your son there and pull him over and say, Ben, how you doing, brother? And have him walk up to the, to the fence and, and, uh, yeah. and chat a little bit. It's, it's, it's a feeling. That's why I'm still, why, why we still do this. The, um, now you also have the key we're, and we're almost done here with Dominic Pace, who, who yeah. I will say has the key to the city in Cleveland, Tennessee. Huh? What, yeah. what does that key open up, Dom? I'm just curious. What is, what do you get for that key? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, obviously, it's more of a symbol that was with right. Cleveland, Tennessee, right. outside Chattanooga. But but I'll tell you, what a beautiful symbol as Americans in regards to being the most unlikely hero from the cast of, again, and hopefully an inspiration to so many young athletes to where, again, you might be third string, you might be second string. But how, you know, when your coach calls you in in the ninth inning to pinch hit and you've been benched the whole entire day of what you're going to do with that opportunity. It's the same thing. You're on screen for seven seconds. What can I do to help our country? What can I do? in this time right now during a pandemic to see how I can help these small business owners who inspired me for so many years in regards to every morning you have to get up like an actor does and get it done. Otherwise you're not going to get a paycheck. 
but also at the same time, you're employing other people, you're helping other people, you're working as a community with beautiful diversity, beautiful integrity, but also at the same time, a teamwork effort, which again, sort of comes back to you. So that's what that key, that's what's being named. That was a Dominic Pace Day for Sioux City, Iowa, a Dominic Pace Day for uh, Houston, Texas, the mayor of Texas. I was just beyond words, but I think what a beautiful Disney story in regards to, again, being the smallest on the ladder, being uh, in, in football, they call it mystery relevant, the draft pick. Uh, and, and to be able to have that kind of impact and to be able to show my sons uh, that level of dedication, even when life hands you very little. I was a little upset with some of the narrative in the schools uh, uh, prior to, obviously, where he's going to be going on to. Uh, but just in regards to, you know, pointing the finger and sometimes it, it's, 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 there's value to it. But he, was, uh, he had a workout with the Notre Dame football team. And the next day he was doing a tryout. He just likes to always feel out, um, you know, some of the other competition. And I said, do me a favor. I said, even though you're sore, do not tell the coach that you you know any excuses because ultimately what it leads out to is again pointing the finger as opposed to what can i do in order to make that audition better what can i do to make this world better as opposed to looking at somebody else and saying hey well it's your fault that i'm not ahead it's caa and icm and william morris's fault that they're the sort of this conglomerate where they're not going to let dominic pace in and and you know it starts shouting at the sky as opposed to looking in one, oneself so i think gecko is less of a character and more of a sort of a symbol of that dedication of, again, when you have little opportunity, you can create something powerful and have it be an inspiration to many people. You know, Don, I, I, I keep saying the gecko, and, and I know there's so, there's NCIS, there's Superstore, Dom, yeah. the, uh, you played the warehouse manager in, in, yeah. in Superstore. Then there's a Desperate Half-Life, Anonymous yeah. Killers, This yeah. Fool. I can go on and on. And we tend to float on, when I talk about my career, yeah, I, we won the College World Series back in 86, <laughs> and I played. However, there are so many beautiful people you've met along the way. I can only yeah. imagine that the relationships you've made along the way. And at the yeah. same time, starting a beautiful family and, and having a beautiful uh, family like that. And um, yeah. I look forward now. We're going to be in Vegas in April. I'm not sure if you guys committed to that, but I'll Please. I'll be there with you. And then uh, this weekend, Please. I'm not sure about the rain, what, what's happening, but yeah. we're Bennett will be, he'll either lead off or hit second, you know, as, as he yeah. does. We Bennett's not a player that... Um, you know, Robbie, Benny's not, you know, Ben is not a player that, you know, he, he doesn't hit ninth because there's no 10th. He he hits first. He's got to see it early. He's got he, he's got to take it on for everybody else, you know. And well, 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 I got to tell you right now, Dan, I mean, they th this team is gelling so well. I mean, one through nine, it is just so inspiring to see every player contribute. And, and there's not one weak player on this team right now with 14 U Black. And, and I, I just am so proud of all the boys, not to mention the camaraderie with all the parents. I mean, just such genuine people. I've been around a little bit more of the pretentiousness of Hollywood. So for the first time in 20 plus years living out here, to have that camaraderie amongst the parents with the Notre Dame program and, and batters program uh, has just been so beautiful because a lot of times I just say to myself, being so grounded, being so real, I've just never been around that hoity-toity sort of snobbery that sometimes comes with the Hollywood elite, you know? Yeah, we, and we try not to allow that. We tell our kids, man, we tell our kids, first of all, it's about the kids. We know that. And we yes. hope the parents get along. And this is one of those things that you were describing that's beautiful. Because, uh, yeah. uh, But the the kids start, they don't realize how much power. These kids don't know how much power, power they have. You get in the car on the way home. How'd it go today? I love my team. That's going to yeah. bring them back again. I love my team. I love my yeah. team. Yeah, the coaches, but the truth is the team, the team is much more important than the three knucklehead coaches, including me, that crosses their arms sometimes. But if I can get the respect uh, from my teammates, and I've done a conference two or three times in front of a large group of coaches, 700, 800 people. Maybe it was just five or six guys. I'm not sure, but my head said 700, 800, a big group. And we talk about the importance of being a teammate yeah. and there goes into not just throwing the ball hard. It's about men coming on the field, coming off the field, showing by example, you don't have yeah. to, they communicate by their eyes, not so much by their mouths. They communicate yeah. by their actions. And, and then what happens is the parents will take on that. that like you just said, Bennett has kind of triggered you a little bit or uh, to, to, to move. And I, I don't, I don't know if these kids understand how important they are that, these parents are watching them not to critique them. If a parent could not, I wish parents wouldn't critique so much. Yeah, just right. allow the kid, allow the kid. Well, Denny, just in regards to crossing over, like we talked about before, there's also was a great restaurant book called Setting the Table. And there was a beautiful quote in there called Constant Gentle Pressure. To where, again, you know, it's the district manager or the owner of the restaurant to where you are not being sort of this uh, Gordon Ramsay. Uh, but in a way of just, hey, you know what, uh, great game. Let's talk about the positives. And then just gently, uh, just sort of interjecting sort of the adjustments uh, throughout the week so that maybe we avoid that. But, you know, never, ever 
why did you not swing on that? Why did you, you know, uh, drop that ball? I mean, what are you thinking? Any of that type of negativity, uh, even as an actor, even with acting classes, we used, I had Tim Robbins where he was like a tough football coach. Uh, yeah. It's called the actors gang in Hollywood. And Got again, it. sometimes you need that. And I love that from my coaches, but as far as teaching uh, as a father, um, I see that he motivates himself. And when you do that, that's when you take a back seat and you don't add that negativity because it's only going to frustrate the kids more and to a point to maybe they're going to put the ball down one day and say, you know what? I don't want to do this. I'm done because what, what, what the trigger is, and we're just about done here, Ravi, I go, the trigger is if you're, if you're in the, I said this the other day, I'm in the front seat. I'm in the back seat. I got my mom and dad in the front. Dad asked me, hey man, why'd you, why'd you, why'd you drop that ball at shortstop? Yeah. And I don't have an answer. And then my the mother, my mother would then say, Jim, would you stop it, man? All right. Can we just can we just drive? Yeah. Then my mom then would trigger and say, you know, Jim, by the way, um, you gotta dump the trash tonight. Make sure you get to the trash. <laughs> then he'd say, Dot, okay, well, I gotta work. Then then he goes, hey, we gotta pay taxes. And then the full fighting becomes nothing about it triggered from him getting on me about dropping a fly ball. And then now I feel responsible while my parents are fighting again in the front seat. Here we go again. And it's on. It's on. Yeah. Sometimes I, it'll be a point to where you just have a batting cage session, you know, and you just uh, go down a bat cage and just all of a sudden, you know, even when I used to finish out of the bullpen, you want to finish on that, that perfect strike. And right. it's sort of that to where you don't have to live with that for the whole week. Because again, even with an audition, I remember flumbling, flumbling my lines uh, for a spinoff of a, uh, of cold case one time. And I was in front of producers, 12, 12, uh, 12 different producers. And I just, it just couldn't come out of my mouth. Right. Uh, so it's the same thing. I said, let's get to the batting cage and just finish on a high note. So then you capitalize on the positive. But that that's how we uh, we coach. That's how we teach. And again, I just also take a back seat to you guys because you, you guys are doing just such a fantastic job with them there. I the Final thing here, and I'll have you have the last word, but I, yeah. I think the best thing a parent can do, Rob, and Rob's got two kids at Chaminade that yeah. played in the baggers organization, in the, or batters organization. But I think the best thing is a parent, jump in the, after the kid's going and you want to finish crossing your arms to critique them this and that, I want the parent to jump in the cage yes. and let them experience what's coming, but not just to prove yourself that, Hey man, uh, uh, you're, you you do not know what the hell you're doing, but not, not that, but get in there. And then here's a good, here's the trick. Here's the key. Ask your son or the, your, Hey, what am I doing wrong? And allow your son now to communicate with you. And what he'll do is he'll communicate with you the way he wants That's to be. Perfect. He yeah. wants to be communicated to. He'll say yeah. to you, because your father, you're the dad or the mom. He'll say, yeah. "Hey, no, you're doing okay. You're doing okay, yeah. but you may want to try." And I and I've learned that they'll tell you how they want to be communicated with if if yeah. we if if we allow them to to put them just switch roles for a little bit. So good, That's so good. right? Yeah, and, and again, yeah, going back to that constant gentle pressure. I think the kids love the structure, but also at the same time, not to the point where there's malice. You know, to where again, right. it's constructive. And also you show, hey, my God, you got a, that was a great rip on, you know, you went one for yeah. three and maybe a horrible strikeout, but let's let's talk about that hit. That was amazing to the gap that you had. You almost hit the wall, you know? Yeah, right, man. That's so great, Dominic. Hey, I can't thank you enough for Absolutely. coming out of this schedule. And if you don't mind, man, now that I got you once, I love yeah. to have you when you got a moment in that busy schedule of yours to bring you back again, man. There's more to hey, talk hey. about. Absolutely. I'm excited about this movie. So maybe right before the premiere, we'd love to uh, maybe come on and, and promote it and also talk to you guys and hopefully uh, see where Bennett's at at that point, too. Yeah, uh, I, I think it's going to be just fine. He'll be just yeah. fine. But let me ask you now, how tall are you? I'm six foot three. OK, and I'm five, nine and a half. But I see we have similarities. I could. Can I go second team with you, Dom? I don't know. Would they <laughs> if they want to bring in. We're about six inches apart. I'm not sure I can. Hey, it's funny you said I did it for Bruce Willis, where I, you know, he was a little offended, but I, it just worked for one movie called Hostage, to where I straddled my legs just a little bit in order to get down to his six one. <laughs> but hey, it happens. They have guys on Apple boxes all the time, so I, I would love that. We get to we we'll shoot the shit. Keep, you'll keep me like it'll be just like a ball player. Keep me loose before, uh, so I don't stiff it up for the uh, shot. Hey, I'll have you prepared. You'll be no, just Denny's going to be an older Dominic. How's that? Yes, yes. Hey, yes. yes. We'll do hey, a, can yeah. you tell me I look like Stanley Tucci, and I. And okay, I hey, you do. Hey, that's a that's a good problem to have. He uh, uh, he just. Did that you would love that if you love uh, food. He did a beautiful tour of Italy with all the uh, Italian foods and such. What a great actor, man! Hey, you're a beautiful man, my friend. A great father, a great family. I love your sons. I don't know your younger one, obviously, because he's not with us. How old your younger son? Let's just give him. A uh, he's actually older than Bennett. He's 17. He's on his way to college. 
Oh, shit. How about that? That tells you how much I know about the Pace family right there. I did not know that. But uh, yeah. I, I really appreciate the support you have given our program and the love you just shared on this podcast for me, man. Okay? Well, thank you so much again. It comes right back around to Bennett, and it just means the world of what you guys are doing for him. So thank okay. you guys so much. Have a great day, and uh, let's go knock this uh, film out of the park there. Yeah. One more time. The name of the film coming up. One more time. Uh, Secrets of a Celebrity Nanny that will be on Lifetime, and then a really nice guest star on NCIS uh, that will be opposite Gary Cole on March 13th on CBS. Love it, man. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much, Mr. Pace. See you now. Thank, Take care. Thank you, guys. Okay. You're on. Hey, parents, friends, relatives. A um, couple things. This is now baseball season is starting. Rosters are being made at the high school level, which means varsity, JV, and freshman, or at the uh, club level, which could be gold, black, red, orange, blue, whatever that may be. Now, I know in there, there is a uh, connotation of a certain uh, team that we're on. And we tend to look at, at the other players on the team to see if we want to make a decision whether we're going to play or not, either that particular weekend or that particular year. I'm here to tell you the most important for your son or daughter is to play. Let the coaches coach as they will, whether they're good or bad, really doesn't matter, your kid should play, play as much as possible. So whether he's going to be feeling the rewards of being on the A team, if you will, or the struggles of being on the F team, if you will, and I'm just using these, 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 these terms freely, I firmly believe that if you just get your son to the park, have him play, the rewards he'll get from walking through frustration, also walking through success, on whatever team he's on is going to build more confidence in this young man or lady and give him the strength he needs to when he goes on to play high school or college or professionally. Every level, there's going to be a challenge on this team or that team. I strongly suggest you just, if he's called upon to play, you get him there and let him play and take it from there. Thanks for letting me talk So here's my final thought.